Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. What's your name? Um, well, I mean, let's just pick a good one today. What do you think? I've done. Hey that. everybody, TJ here. Okay, there it is, TJ. He's TJ. I'm Ben. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. This is episode 19. That means episode 20 is coming up next week. Super excited to hit that benchmark just for the heck of doing it. I mean, that's awesome. 20 episodes of Tech Tuesday. Oh, man, have I been? Have I missed a Tech Tuesday? I guess not. I think I've been in every Tech Tuesday. I don't know if that means that I'm really good at being in them or if I'm really good at uh, not being needed for other things to be pulled away from. I'm needed for other things, but I'm making an exception because these are important. It's as that important. It makes me feel great inside. Anyway, moving on from uh, the actual first question, mm. um, question uno. Dominic Terry says, on the jackpot fabricated intake, the vacuum ports on the bottom, any suggestion on plugs, or should I install the barb fittings with vacuum caps? I only will need vacuum lines for a brake booster. Thank you, Dom. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as plugs that, don't, that are not with the kit, um, I mean... I don't. I don't have a specific rec- recommendation. For those are those like are that. just normal old MPT plugs. Yeah. Um, I think there's a like a few one eighths, maybe one sixteenth, something like that. Yeah. Um, nothing crazy. I mean, that's just normal plugs. You, most of the time, you can buy them at the local auto parts store. Mm-hmm. What have you? Not not a good source if you go to like a hardware store like Lowe's yeah. or something. That's for some reason they never have them anymore. Yeah. But. You can get the little four pack. You should be able to find them. Yep. This is standard issue MPT. You go find that on any WD website or probably your local auto parts store. Question two. Doc 4244 EFA. How long should you run in learn mode? Holly says forever. Who? I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I still got, I still have I friends hi. over there. Those. I said hi. Uh, Hi yeah. says, have a holly jolly Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Christmas. Oof. No, actually, weirdly enough, as competitors go, like if we do have competitors that has a thing that a customer absolutely needs, I'm probably the worst salesman by saying like, yeah, we don't make this particular thing, yeah. but I know someone yeah, who does. Yeah, I know somebody who does. And it's it's not bad products; they're just no. a different product. Um. How long should you learn uh, run and learn mode? All right. Uh, really, what I would do is I go give it a drive a few times. If it's acting good and feeling mm-hmm. good and running good and it's not doing nothing funny, you're not seeing AFRs all over the place when you get into the accelerator, um, and you got your your tip in throttle good and your yeah. fuel table feels great. Yeah. Go in there and turn off the the, the loop and learn. And the O2 sensor will still indicate values, letting you know what it's reading, but it's not going to do nothing with it. So if right. you, at that point, you're kind of going back to that good old fashioned open loop tune, um, mm-hmm. because even if your O2 sensor gets knocked off, on, like with a stick on the road or a piece of tire, <laughs> or it just goes bad, or yeah. something funny happens and you melt a, a bit of wiring, you can be like, oh no, I just unplugged this thing, and the bass tune is still there, yep. and the learn data is still there, and yep. it's going to. Just it'll be fine. Yep. Doesn't it go into an open loop tune after a while? Like if you drive it for long enough, no. in theory, it'll go back no. into an open loop. Tune. Learning will disable and enable as if it needs to put values into the table, it'll say mm-hmm. enabled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you want it to learn real good. Go through a few drive cycles, all that jazz. Yeah. Let it let it populate the data. It's going to populate if first. It's, yeah, if it's and it seems like it's back. not really doing nothing, you're just cruising down the road and it's yeah. great. Just have it go at turning it off. Just turn off the uh, loop and learn under fuel and advanced, and go for a drive. And yep. even if your O2 sensor goes bad or something damages it, it's not going to do anything. Yep. It's just going to keep reading the table and having a great day, and you'll never even notice. Other than you'll see some values on the handheld be like, "Oh, it's reading 147 on my O2 sensor, but it runs Very good." True. I need to call them up and see if that thing's still under warranty. Yep. Okay. Porky's Fabrication. Um, it just says Fab, but I'm going to assume he means Fabrication. Um, anything MPI for the big block Ford in the pipeline or a base 4,000 
five hundred base flange. Mmm. I actually I actually don't know this, and if there is something really close down the pipeline, I don't know. Don't please don't say or do. I don't know. You're known for this. If we're gonna do the next big block, we do it will probably be Mopar related. To be honest, there's a lot of Mopar guys out there doing a thing, and mm. um, you know we you know, the 440s and all that jazz M cats. Right. There's there's a lot of them out there, and you know we definitely want to cater to. We do have the big block Chevy. How much? How cr- more crazy? Uh, we do have the big block Chevy. So how much? Um, different is it from on as far as the intake goes versus the software side of things for big block stuff yeah physically the intake's different completely different no oh, isn't yeah completely different intake it'll look the same but the flanges will be in a different spot the holes and all that jazz it'll be a whole different thing uh, so. okay see that's the only reason i was going to say is there any way that we could manipulate it in the software to be something to nah, run something like it no so nah, we is this going to be a ford ford you have firing. To get a brand new casting yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't. I mean, obviously, I just didn't know if we had to go to the drawing board entirely for. Weirdly enough, no. That with the sheet metal fabricated intakes out there in the world, mm-hmm. like you know, our manufacturer for those intakes, they they're doing they're doing a custom one for us. It's a little bit different than this available on the market, which is mm-hmm. great. Just like we did with the LS stuff, it's a little mm-hmm. thicker, a little better, better welds, but. Yeah. You know, we, we do have to pay for that to get that. Right. Um, when it comes to the Ford stuff, the big block Ford, you'll probably see a sheet metal intake before that, before you see like a cast center flange, 4150 or 4500 square flange. Mm. Um, we may do a 4500 flange down the road for a bigger horsepower application. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of on one of the 10,000 drawing boards that I'm on. <laughs> Um, but that's the thing. We c- we do want to eventually do a, a big old throttle body, but there needs to be enough market there to support that. And the R and D side of that's not a big deal. It's literally the manufacturing that's the big deal. Uh, Gavin Angston eight three one five. That too? It all just flows. It just together. went together. Yeah, yeah Gavin, Gavin Angston, Angston eight three one five. Is there a way to set up the two-step through the advanced tuning software? Womp, womp, there's, a, womp. there's a section, depending on the system you're using, if yep. it's uh, something with a CDI box built in or if it's a jackpot. Um, a lot of them, there'll, there'll be a, a, an option for two-step. I don't think it's in a jackpot yet, actually. I have nope. to check into that. But like the ones with the CDI boxes, there's there's a two-step. It's not even two-step. It's launch control is what it is. Mm-hmm. So there's a main rev limiter, and there's launch control, and the RPM drops, and the timing, and all that of it. Yeah. So that is in the tuning software. You can do it in the handheld the same. It's about yep. the same amount of options. I don't think there's anything special in the advanced tuning software yep. above that. Um, that will be get a little more complex later with adding in all the extra stuff. Our ECUs are very capable of doing a lot of great things. Mm. We got about half of it turned on programming-wise, weirdly enough. Just because we're we're not we're not trying to put out some junk. Um it's Carl uh, seventy nine again says six L six R eighty E and ten speed controller capable, please. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. I agree. That's a thing. Is a can splitter able to be used in newer than software version two point oh seven where can is active? We're adding can to a lot of other systems. We're just making sure it communicates correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll be able to use a can splitter. So, ECU, handheld, computer, the whole gig. Mm. Um, thinking ahead, I'd like to be able to always have my 7-inch connected in the dash and also be able to plug in my laptop when needed. I don't blame you. I got one that's all manipulated together and looks horrible, but it works because I'm using some different software than most people do, I think. But, yeah, that it does work and do a thing. <laughs> if you're using... I just read later into the comment. I didn't see that. Right. So here we go. Um, Can both be ran simultaneously? It's going to be a yeah on that. But if you are doing an ECU update where you are very directly transferring information from the handheld to the ECU, don't plug in your laptop to do it at the same time because everything has a CAN ID number. And when you're doing hard, nasty firmware updates, you may run into a situation where it confuses where it's supposed to go. 
So you need to really need to pipeline that directly to its source. Uh, hyphen. Also, Tim, look up Michael F. Florio on NFL Network Fantasy Football. He is my brother. And you guys are very similar faces. Thanks for all you do. So apparently, I'm a fantasy footballer now. Got some real NPR vibes going on. Quick question from Doc four two four four E F A. Quick question. I'm installing my kill shot my '98 Chevy seven four dually with a four L eighty trans. So as I remove all old factory fuel injection system, wondering how is my transmission going to work? Um, thanks, Eddie. Super neat on that kill shot. We make a trans control module for it. And with a kill shot, right now on our truck, we have a old 5.7 liter with fat mm -hmm. cam. And we got a 4L80. And they talk and they shift and they do a great job. I think I posted a, a YouTube short somewhere of that thing actually cruising up the road. Mm. It's the best shifting thing I think I've felt in a while because it's a proper transmission that was built by a guy I know that builds transmissions. Mm. And uh, our trans controller, I mean, that thing was hitting out of the park. We, we did a lot of R&D on that thing, cruised it around, did a lot of data logging, messed with it a few times, this, that, and the other. Um, I'm pretty happy with the end product on the 4L80s. Uh, but, yeah, you'd have to get a trans controller. I don't know how much it costs. cost. You can check the website or just call one of the customer service people. They'll have an exact number for you. But, yeah, 207 on the firmware for the kill shot, trans controller, hook it up. And I think the only real thing you need to do outside of that is – no, that's that's about it. It's a pretty easy install. There's a handful. Of, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a TCU TCM whatever it is for the uh, quick draw mm -hmm. trans controller video extremely soon. Speed vert. So you suggest checking the change log for the software. For the life for of the me, I can't, can't find, find any change log, change the software. log Where software. The Where is the change log? Change log. I assume in this video he means like how do I save my tune? Probably right? Not. No. What's it what does he what else what do you mean by change log? Maybe he's talking about the like the version of it, like what the handheld and ECU versions are on. Mm. When I think change log, I think about like if we post a a new update, like what is changed, like a log of what's changed is what pops into my mind when I think change log. Oh, maybe oh. Maybe I'm wrong. That's, if no, not, that's probably what he means. Change clarify. log in the software. So it's not. It's not on the software. It'll be posted every single time to um, Aces Owners and Tech on Facebook if you want to read into the uh, change logs. Can you use a Chromebook to do these updates? Uh, he's referring to the um, updates on the um, ECU and handheld. This is Marv. Uh, M.A. M A V G R A B. I'm dyslexic. Mavgrab seventy. Mavgrab. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, you cannot use a Chromebook uh, to do that. You will need a PC. Um, if you are using an iOS device um, or Apple device, you'll need some kind of uh, Parallels uh, software that will mimic the PC laptop or PC softwares. I've had um, the Chromebook be a hit or miss, to be honest. I've had it. Oh, you have used I've a Chromebook. I've had it work, and then I've had it not, not work, work in any way. Yeah. And it's it's a it just it's just enough to give you a headache because if you're confident that it's going to work, it, that's the day it doesn't. Yeah. And it's that's the thing. I was with a customer doing a thing, and he's like, "I got a Chromebook." I'm like, "Well, let's just give it a shot and see what yeah. happens." Got it, extracted it, did a thing, and it's really because on the Chromebook, Windows is like an app base. It's not you know 64 or anything like that. So, it. I've had it work, but I've also had it not work. Tech Tuesday, episode mm. 19, Tim. I'd Good say, job. I'd say it's 19. I'd say it's 19. 19, alkaline water, um, and tech questions. I look, they got full-size caps on these, too, so you know, that was bougie. Oh, my goodness. 
Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions about EFI or ACES EFI in general, also leave a comment down below. If you see Tech Tuesday related media anywhere else on social media, please feel free to show it some love and we will be back at you next week though you might be taking a little bit of a vacation maybe possibly no oh, i'll still be working no okay okay some, um you know, and then the maybe not josh either because he's gonna be on a work trip dude too. i think we ought to get bradley on next week. we could regardless we could. of whether i'm here or not yeah I think we, we should do, do bradley. bradley as a tech yeah um we can do that too um giving them pretty youthful cats and yeah. yeah 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 get rid of me <laughs> you know your place. I know that. I know. I'm sure people do. Um, yeah. Thanks again so much for watching, and we will see all of you in the next video. Bye now. Bye now.